Welcome to Illo Talk. I am Corey Kerr, and this is AI to AE, where I show you how to transfer um, and learn Adobe After Effects if you already have a working knowledge of Adobe Illustrator. So before we get started, you need to know a little bit about how Adobe After Effects works and what it looks like. And so let's jump into that. Basically, when you open up Adobe After Effects, it's going to look something like this. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually looking at the animation workspace. So you can have a bunch of different workspaces here, but because we're mainly going to be dealing with animation, I'm going to do the animation workspace. Now you can do, you know, motion tracking, text, minimal, you know, if you do all panels, okay, everything kind of looks like that. We're basically going to go with animation. The other thing you need to understand is that the toolbar is significantly smaller than um, what you would expect to be there in Illustrator. Also, that your workspace is significantly different. Now, in Adobe Illustrator, I'm in here like this. <clears throat> I have big artboards, and I'm working on everything inside of this artboard, right? I've got my toolbar on the left, I've got my options bar in the top, and I've got some panels on the right. And that's basically what's going on inside of Illustrator. And if you jump over to After Effects, it looks significantly different. Now let me, let me load a project here so that we can actually see kind of what it looks like. Let's, uh, let's just open this one. So as that's loading, the familiar part is going to be this preview window here, right? This preview window kind of looks like what you would expect to be an artboard. Um, and that's where you see what is going on down here in the timeline. And so this is the timeline. And the main difference between Illustrator and After Effects, there are many, but the main difference is that Illustrator is dealing with a single image, whereas After Effects is dealing with things that happen over time. And so we'll talk more about keyframes in the next video, but basically things change over time. And so this right here is called a playhead. And this playhead is going to travel along the timeline. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. It's going to travel along the timeline. And wherever this playhead is, is what is going to show at that exact frame, what is going to show in your preview. Okay. And then over here on your right and on the top and on the left, you have a lot of things that are called cells and panels. Okay, and cells and panels are basically like this. So right inside of here, I can make this adjustment, get that little icon, you can move things over. You'll notice that I have effects and presets, and then if I click over here, I have libraries. So each one of these tabs, maybe let's take the preview, and we'll drag it. Okay, now we've got effects, presets, libraries, and preview. But if I want that to be above in its own thing, okay, I can kind of do that. And so, <clears throat> The cells themselves are kind of the location. They can expand or contract um, in their size and they can be moved around. Inside of those cells, you have um, your panels. And you can have a number of panels, you can delete panels, you can add panels, but your panels will give you some controls. For example, I have a panel that is not standard um, to After Effects. I've downloaded a plugin that I really like called Rubber Hose. I've put it in its own cell and it, it just lives right over here for me. Now I can save that workspace. Up here on the top, you'll see tools. Now these tools, some of them have a similar look to them um, that you might expect from Illustrator. The selection tool, which shares a shortcut with the, the selection tool in Illustrator, the black arrow tool is V. Okay. If you want to move around, you can press the space bar just like you can in Illustrator, or you can switch over to your hand tool by pressing H. Okay, your zoom tool is also the the shortcut is Z, and I can come in here and click Z and click and drag, and it'll zoom in on things. Okay, so you can kind of zoom in on things. Um, but in any case, I'm going to zoom back out um, by holding Alt. Okay, and then your rotate tool, which in Illustrator is R for rotate. Here is W. Okay, and then you have your unified camera tool that will move your camera. That's C. You have your pan behind tool or what's considered the anchor point tool, and that's Y. 
We're going to talk about the anchor point in a minute, um, but the anchor points are significantly different uh, in After Effects than you would think because they are not the changes in the path uh, of a vector object as they are in, in Illustrator. What they are is they are kind of the origin point. And so the anchor point is which is, is the thing by which everything scales, rotates, moves, um, you know, positions itself. The anchor point is each object's um, kind of home, home base. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Then you have some shape tools under, underneath the rectangle, to, rectangle tool. Um, you've got rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygonal tool, star tool. Those are all Q. Okay. You got some pen tools. Um, and these actually deal with vertex or vertices, which the equivalent of a vertice is, or a vertex is a anchor point in After Effects. It's called a vertex or a vertice. Okay. And then next to that, you've got your type tool. And next to that, you've got your brush tool, your clone stamp tool, your eraser tool. And then under roto brush, you've got a, a number of tools there and the puppet pin tool. Okay, so when working with animation, there's a lot of different things that you can do and there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. The ones that I will be showing you how to use, okay, the black arrow tool, V, hand tool, zoom, rotate, camera, anchor point or pan behind tool. We'll deal a little bit with these three. I'm not gonna touch any of these, okay? And then we're gonna deal with the puppet tool as well. Okay, you have other things along your options bar along the top, and um, that's basically that. Over here, okay, you have a project, okay, and this project, um, it's got some information there, but then inside of here, we have different things that I've imported. And so let's take a look at one of these. I'm gonna go to here, and I'm just gonna double click on this. And what it does is it loads this composition into my timeline. So compositions look like this over here. <clears throat> Think of compositions as kind of a combination between an artboard and a group in Illustrator. For example, in Illustrator, you can group things up and they will kind of stay together, right? Now you can double click on those things and it'll go into uh, isolation mode, right? Um, and then you're just dealing with the things inside of that group. I say it's also like an artboard because it's its own space, but it can be nested inside of other compositions. And so for example, I've got over here, I've got just the group or the head, all the things that are inside the head. And if I double click on that, you can see that it's just the things that are inside of that, inside of that group. Now that is called a composition. And inside of this head composition, I have other objects. You'll notice that I have two different objects here. And those objects are made up of things that I drew in Illustrator and imported. Um, but they are a composition within a composition within a composition. Then I can take this whole character. Okay, so let's go back out. I can take this whole character and I can drag this entire composition, which is this guy, into another composition and I can work with that character within a scene. So you can have nested compositions. Think of rusting, Russian nesting dolls where you have you know, a doll within a doll within a doll. It gets very Inception-like. But basically, um, you don't deal with groups. Um, you deal with your assets inside of compositions and you can, you can pre-compose those. And we'll talk about uh, compositions a little bit more later. Now, now that I've had this head, I wanna show you um, what I'm talking about with an anchor point. So this, this little deal right here is our anchor point, okay? Now, if I were to do some rotation, you'll notice that it rotates and pivots on that anchor point, not on the center, okay? If I were to do some resizing and scale this up, it scales from that anchor point. Y, which is my anchor point or pan behind tool, and I can move this anchor point to be somewhere else. And then when I do a rotation, it now rotates off of that new position, right? And so 
the origin of everything is going to happen on that anchor point. Okay, and so that's kind of what I mean by anchor points. Now, let me show you inside of this, we'll go inside and we'll look at one of the antennas. Okay, when we click on this, you'll see that the anchor point, I've moved it up here. Now, if it was down here, okay, that would change everything. And so it's up here so that when I have this wiggle, notice that it wiggles and it rotates um, off of where that anchor point is. Okay, and when I come back out, to the head, you can see that that whole thing is pivoting on this anchor point. And so when the whole thing moves, you can see that it's pivoting on that, right? And so that's what an anchor point does, right? You, you reset where the anchor point is with your pan behind tool, and you can tween that over time. We'll talk about tweening as well. But those are the basics of um, the workspace in After Effects. Again, we were dealing with mainly the animation um, preset. And then um, I wanted to show you one more thing. Let's say that rubber hose wasn't here. So I'm going to close this panel. And you want it to be there. You can go to Window. And any of these things, you can bring them in and open them up. So if I want to add my rubber hose plugin, okay, I can add it right there. I can also add it anywhere else. If I put it in the inside here, you get that little purplish deal. It's going to create a tab inside of that cell. So now we have our preview and we have rubber hose. So if I want to pull this out, I can move it over. It creates its own cell, right? To the left or to the top, to the bottom, okay, to the left or whatever. So those little purple indicators are telling you where this is going to go. I want this to go in its own cell beneath all of my assets, and so I put it right there. Okay, and so that's how you add something. Okay, if you want to close something or if you don't find something useful, um, you know, I'm not dealing with audio right now, then you can undock the panel, and that will move it, you know, allow you to move it to an external monitor, or you can close the panel, or you can close um, all the panels in that group or whatever, right? You have a lot of different things. But let's say we don't need audio right now. I'm going to close that panel, okay? And I'll close this panel too. And then the audio goes away, right? If I want to bring the audio back, I can come back and I can say, bring it back and it'll put it back in its last position. And you kind of have it right there. So that's kind of, that's kind of the basics of how it works and how it looks. And so when I'm talking about panels and cells, you'll know what I'm talking about, the preview window, and your timeline, okay? And remember that the preview window is showing the active timeline one frame at a time at wherever your playhead is. So you can scrub back and forth, and scrubbing is considered moving your playhead back and forth. You can scrub back and forth, and it only shows a single frame of whatever this playhead is at right now. So for more of these videos, subscribe. If you like this video, like it. Um, you know, and uh, I will be doing a number of these in a row to help you transition from making stuff look awesome in Illustrator to making that awesome stuff move. And so the next thing that we're going to talk about is keyframes. And then I'm going to talk about um, importing things into Illustrator because there's an important way that you do that. And if you do it wrong, then it'll really mess things up. All right. This was Illotalk AI to AE. I'm going to get used to saying that. And I am Corey Kerr, and you can catch my stuff at coreykerr.com. That's been on the screen. And I've got social media links in the description of this video. We'll catch you guys later.